What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mark. This is Spagaver's Garage. And today we're out here kind of doing a little bit of prep work on the Supra for the next modification. Now I've got almost all the parts for this, uh, but I am missing a bracket. So uh, what I'm doing today is a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of electrical, getting this thing set up so that when that bracket comes in, we can drop it in, get this thing going and start tuning for what we've got right now. So why don't we take a look at exactly what it is that we're doing and uh, kind of go through why. I think that's an important piece is why are we doing this? Okay, so here's what we're doing today. We are installing or at least plumbing a meth kit. So I have here my two injectors and a T. Um, what I'm missing is a bracket. So I was starting to go through the install process and I want to put it in this cubby right here uh, which is where a lot of people put theirs but the burger kit which I'm using and the reason I'm using the burger kit is it has the FSB which plugs into the JB4 and so even though this is a locked ECU I can run meth and have it controlled through the JB4 and we can set up tunes specifically for it that have what PSI it kicks on when it's running full and so uh, that's kind of what we're working with here is is a system that we can install and run with the JB4. And that will get us the absolute most we can out of this stock turbo. And it sets us up that if down the road we want to go to a, an upgraded turbo, we can do that with this system. Now there are some advantages to going with a water methanol injection kit. A lot of people just call it a meth kit. It's a, what I'm gonna be running is a 50-50. It's boost juice is what I've, I've got right now. But I will probably pick up an M1, a jug of M1, five gallons, and then mix it up myself 50-50 with distilled water. Uh, and that's going to go a lot further for the cost. But one of the advantages, and one of the reasons I had looked at this to begin with, was this is a direct injection engine. And one of the problems that direct injection engines have is that there's nothing cleaning the valves. There's nothing on the intake side spraying in. So port injection uh, solves that problem by spraying in and cleaning off the valves and you don't get that carbon buildup. Water methanol injection is another way that you can do that and it sprays in. You can go a few different places of where you're actually going to be injecting the mixture into your system. Uh, but I'm going in the charge pipe. That's one of the reasons I bought the FTP charge pipe that I've got is it already has two bungs that I can install the two injectors in. So the two injectors will go in the charge pipe. It'll come from the solenoid to the T and then these are equal distance apart so that I have no pressure issues. Uh, so that's one of the things you want to do. If you've got multiple injectors, you want the distance from wherever they split to be equal so they get equal pressure all the time. And so that's what we're going to be doing there. But this does allow that cleaning to take place that doesn't exist in direct injection engines. The downside to the direct injection is that after a while, somewhere between 60 and 100,000 miles is what I've seen BMW uh, owners experience and some of the Volkswagen owners and others that have direct injection engines is that they have to get the intake taken off and then the head uh, has to be walnut sprayed. So it's walnut blasted. So like bead blasting, sand blasting, but with walnut shells. And it's a, it's a lengthy process. It's a time consuming process that, that costs a, quite a bit of money because of how much you have to pull off. You have to make sure that the valves are seated. So it, it involves a, a lot of, a lot of steps there to make sure that you get it right and you don't get anything down into the engine. Definitely not something you want to do at home, just trying to do yourself. So this helps solve that. It also will do a couple of things. Number one, intake temperatures get reduced significantly, which we all know when it's cooler, we produce more boost or at least more power from the boost. And so boost weather kind of becomes all year long. And so I'm actually going to be doing another mod to the car that helps with that as well. But spraying methanol injection or water meth injection will cool the temperatures significantly, like up to a hundred degree drop, depending on, on the use and how you're, how you're actually, what you're spraying, how much you're spraying and what the temperatures are in the engine outside, how hard you're pushing things. Um, so that could be, that could be a big advantage that you want to take advantage of. 
Next, it also increases octane. Methanol is a fuel. Now at a 50-50 mixture, it is not really flammable, which is why I'm okay putting it in the, uh, in the engine bay, but it will kick up the, the octane, which allows you to get more out of your fuel mixture. And so right now, uh, I'm running, with the boost, with the, the actual tune that I've got in there right now, my, my fuel trims are really high. And so that's one of the reasons we had to go to this. We had to go to this or uh, some other fueling solution, port injection or something to bring those fuel trims down so that we're at a safer level. Uh, so that's what we're doing. And I've seen other people who have done dual setups as well and they've dropped from in the, the high 40s for their fuel trims down into the 20s, the low 20s. And so that's really what we're looking for is bringing those down to a better level, getting the uh, AFR a little bit better, and just getting the fuel trims, the octane level, everything right with the added, added advantage of cleaning the intake side, the valves, and giving us a, a boost in octane and the uh, cooler intake temperatures. So. That's what we're doing. Let's jump in here and uh, take a look at what we've done so far. Okay, so like I said, over there is where I'm putting the fuel tank and the pump, or the, the meth tank uh, and the pump. It'll be a one gallon tank, and then the pump will pump the fuel mixture over. And so I've already run a line, uh, a fuel line, a plastic or a nylon line up under the windshield wiper area and so it's out of the engine bay and it's kind of up behind and hidden and so it's over there with a coil of of tube over there so that i've got plenty to uh hook that up and i've still got, got got more so that i can plumb it from the the tank to the pump get that all taken care of and then it comes to this solenoid right here that has a filter on it one-way check valve and so everything is set up so that i can put that in this area right here which is where I house my JB4. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a bracket in here, uh, probably out of Lexan. Uh, so a bracket to hold the FSB controller, which is, is pretty small, the JB4 and the solenoid so that they're not just flopping around. They're, they're nice and secured. And I want to create a nice presented package there uh, so that anyone who opens this up sees it and it's good. Now, for the, the line that goes from the solenoid, which will be down in here from the solenoid. It will come uh, actually over here and under this panel and come down under this panel and come out right here. At which point I have these two, which you can see there's a bung right here and a bung right here. The injectors will be in there and then the line will not be up above like I'm showing right here. It'll actually sit down in below. And uh, so it is hidden up underneath and will be secured underneath with some 3M brackets uh, that'll secure right to the back of that, hold it in place, and I won't have any problems with it getting involved with anything else there. And then the line will be run up through. So pretty simple. FSB, uh, what's nice about it is that it has pins that plug directly into the JB4. So we're gonna have to open up the JB4, get into the connector there, put some new pins in there, reconnect everything, run a couple of wires, power wire, ground wire, wires over to the uh, the pump itself, and then wires to the solenoid so that we can run everything. Really it's a pretty simple install. If you've already got the JB4 hooked up, you have pretty much at least half of that part already done uh, because it's all here. You just have to plug into it, tap in, and make it work. I'm gonna be using the power over here, the little power connector over there. Uh, I'm gonna run the power from there across just like it did for the uh, the fuelet that I've got here. The fuelet is plugged into that as well and so I'm going to tap into that line uh, and I will use the same actually I'll, I'll probably look first to see if there's a good ground over here but I do have a good ground that I've used for the fuelet over there already proven to be good. It's what I'll be using for the fuel pump or for the the methanol pump on that side so I may just run a line over and have everything to the same ground so that I know I've got a good ground. All right, so I've got the meth kit fully installed and it's working. Now I did run into a few different issues, um, but it took a little bit of, of trial and error to get it actually set up and working right. So I've had it on the car now for about two weeks. 
Uh, I've run through almost two tanks of boost juice, uh, but I've also gone out and bought 100% methanol that I can then mix up myself or run uh, different concentrations because that's a 49-51, so 49% methanol, 51% water, so it's under that 50-50 ratio for the boost juice. Uh, but we may want to go up to as, as high as a 75-25. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I know that there are some risks with doing that, especially since I've got everything in the engine bay, uh, but it is kind of isolated and out of the way. So I bought the P-tuned, you guys heard me talking about getting the P-tuned um, bracket so that I could get it all installed. Well, the P-tuned bracket didn't work with the, um, the tank that I've got. I'm gonna have to make some adjustments, gonna have to take some, some things apart and redo it. So I've got it kind of temporarily installed back here right now, it works. Uh, but what you can see here is that it's a clean setup. Um, really, there's no no tubes, no wires, nothing protruding, sticking out, hanging out anywhere. But one of the things, I've got the engine cover on here. I have not had the engine cover on, and for a good reason, but I'll show you guys why right now. All right, so engine cover has not been on because of this. So right here is one of the injectors. I've got the two injectors on the FTP charge pipe. This injector hits the, uh, the cover. So I've already got a spot on the charge pipe where it has rubbed the paint away from um, the cover just kind of resting on there and rubbing. So I'm gonna actually, now that it has to be done, I'm gonna notch it here and I'm gonna put a little bit of a notch right here to keep that from happening again. But until then, I'll just run it with no cover. So when I started out doing this, the intent was to show you guys the entire install, show you guys how I wired things, how I routed things. But at the end of the day, uh, it wasn't a one day project like I had anticipated it being. It ended up being uh, several days and then a couple of days trying to figure out why it wasn't working. And we re-ran wires, we rewired things, we ran it instead of a constant power source to a, uh, a switched power source. We ended up adding a, a different fuse block. Uh, so lots of different things and it turns out it was just the map that we were trying to purge it in wasn't so you can't purge it in map six you actually have to go to map seven to purge it so for anyone out there who is going to do this and you're going to get to the point where you have to purge it which you have to to get all of the air out of the system uh, just know it has to be in map seven then you can hit the purge button and it actually works so uh took everything apart did a lot of troubleshooting a lot of shooting uh wires i was checking Power. I was checking ground, I was checking continuity, I was foaming things out. Um, at the end of the day, it turned out we were just in the wrong map to purge. Yeah, let me be the, uh, the dipshit that gives you the, <laughs> the advantage when you go to do it. Uh, so everything's in here, everything's good. I do have some, some cleanup work I'm gonna do at some point. Um, I do wanna build a new bracket over here on the driver's side for the uh, FSB and the JB4 and kind of clean that up uh, and then on the the passenger side on the passenger side the tank and the uh, the tank and the pump are going to get installed onto either the P-Tune uh, if I can get it to work or maybe I will switch out this tank for an AEM tank which does work with the P-Tune and then we'll get it to work that way but either way it's in here it's working things have been great uh, I've done a lot of back and forth with Jesse, getting the tune right, and I even took it out this past weekend. So let's check out what we did this past weekend.
was what we did last weekend. Had a lot of fun. Uh, got out there with that group and, and always enjoy that. I did want to show you guys the spoiler now that it's been on here. Uh, got everything cleaned up. Did a lot of cleanup work, polishing, buffing, getting this thing right where it needed to be, and then ceramic coating everything so it is it is super clean and set up just absolutely perfect right now. All right guys, next thing we're gonna be doing, this is an A90 shop, Alpha Carbon spoiler. They have also sent me some of the carbon exhaust shields. That's the next video that you guys will be seeing. I'll be doing an install of those and show you guys how they look on here. So uh, make sure you guys tune in, come back and do that. If you haven't done so before, hit that subscribe button. Give me a like, shoot me some comments. Let me know what you guys wanna see. Appreciate it guys. I'll see you next time.